right, let's uh, get in here. Okay, and so you just want to cover the customization here on working it for your opportunities? Yes, because I, okay, a lot of the tools that I know what they are because I use them, but I couldn't, if you tell me to explain it to someone, I couldn't do it. Like an autoresponder, I cannot explain an autoresponder. Sometimes I still get confused about autoresponder. So okay. uh, I know what I know what you're supposed to do with it. I know how you use it with you know have a campaign, but how to set one up, how to start one, how uh, all that I I couldn't explain to anybody. And I, since I'm not trying to get my I'm get my own system, I at least have to know what I'm doing with the tools. Gotcha. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, so uh, what Tyson's working on right now, so there should be videos coming up um, in this step three here that will have a lot of the different tools. Um, so as far as the autoresponders, they should. I think he's actually got some of them out. No, that one's not done yet. But <clears throat> he will have uh, a lot of these videos up. So um, there will be some more videos coming soon on that. Um, you can get there and review some of those um, for an overview of it with the autoresponder as far as setting one up. What you'll want to set up first is the contact group. <clears throat> so when you get in here to the contact group, <clears throat> you'll uh, set up a particular group depending on what you want like I set up here the MSI concept so there are a specific group you just come in here you title a group whatever you want to name it and you add that contact group so once that group is then added you'll come over to your autoresponder and you'll be able to add a message and then you'll select whatever group you want it to go to okay so then when when you select that group like this here, this has an autoresponder campaign that goes specifically to contacts that land in that group. So you'll you'll be able to see that those autoresponder messages and have those go out to that particular group. And so you'll want to set that up first, and then what you do to get leads into that group, you can either come and transfer them to that group, or when you set up your actual page. Uh, you set up the default group that they land in in that particular page. So here it shows here the contact group. You can place them in whatever group that they want. So okay. you'll you'll do that by page, and that's how you get your capture pages to land people in specific groups, and then your autoresponders will follow off of the off off of that group. Okay. That kind of makes sense for you. It, it, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, I'll listen to the video again, and I'll have the video, and I'll look at the, I'll look at my screen, and then I, I'll get it. Like I said, you know, if I had to go do one on my own, it it would take me a day. I'm not gonna lie to you. Gotcha. So there's a lot of um, campaigns that you can write up. Uh, you guys should have access to the MSI concept campaign. It should trickle down for you guys, um, shared to the downline. So that you should have access to um, with as far as the messaging. So you'll be able to see what these messages are like. Plus you're in that group, so you'll get these emails from me. You can literally copy and paste those into there. Um, the thing with writing autoresponder messages is that you have to use a lot of variables. So when you go to add a message, I'll show you here what I mean by variables. So all these down here are different variables. Oh, so right. You'll want to use these. Yeah, you'll want to use these variables when writing an email because it will change based on that person. So let me go back to the autoresponder itself. So in looking at this email message here, this one has the variables for the name. 
So this will pull my contact's first name. This will pull my name. And then this will have my name, my phone number, and my email address. So if I ever change anything in the system, it'll automatically update with that. Granted, my stuff's not going to change, but you know, you'll want to use those variables so that you can change anything that you need to change at any given time. So then you don't have to constantly update your messages. So if I go to here and I change my phone number, it'll automatically change on all of my emails that go out. I got you. I understand now. I understand very so well. Okay. Yeah, that's why you'll want to use the variables so that you constantly have those changing. Um, you know, especially with the main variable is to use their name. So, I mean, mm -hmm. as long as you have the name variable in there, that's going to be the most commonly used one, um, you know, because the name's always going to change with each email. Um, so, I mean, just the main thing is the names um, of, of those right there, which is a, is an easy variable to enter in because, I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory there, name. And then you just use the tilde in the front um, and the back of that word, and that makes it the variable. So pretty good there. And then also uh, the URL here, um, that gives them a good place to go to. You know, you can have your URL already stamped in there, um, you know, for each one of your emails as well. So, and then I can show you how to put in icons. This pretty much is just a hyperlinked picture. Um, so you just get a little icon, save the picture, and then you hyperlink that picture. The same thing like we do on a on um, blogger like with making banners it's pretty much that same same thing as well and then you just add the html code to the autoresponder if you want to get more advanced into putting those pictures in there okay i understand that yeah, but that goes into the autoresponders and covering uh as far as the contact groups um, which kind of i believe that was the question that you had yesterday Yes, and um, I, I I think on Monday, uh, Tyson was going into that a little bit with on the phone, and I I, I messaged you and said um, we have a message about that, you know, uh, you know, a training about that, and um, I I've been I still couldn't under, I was looking at it, still couldn't understand it until you you made a little clearer just now with the variables and. You know, contacts and all that. Now I can understand a little bit more. Okay. I'm able to do it because I wasn't able to do it. If I do it, keep doing it enough, I'll be able to understand it. Gotcha. Yeah, so you'll definitely have the video now to be able to update that. Um, and then, as far as the customization for your business, there's obviously two ways that you can build the pages now uh, and come into the wizard and do a sales page or a capture page. Um, so you can do those inside of there. Looks like they're changing this up here to go straight to the editor. Yeah, they're going to go straight to the editor now. So it looks like they're actually going to take away old capture pages. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, you can come into the editor and then you'll just do a create page. Um, you can either do the wizard. Um, or you can go through and do a, either, um, I did mine in responsive, but it is in beta. Freestyle works pretty well as well. Um, but you can just kind of pick your page layout, how you want it to be. Um, usually I have video left and information right, um, just so people can read left to right. But you can use any of the formats, uh, put in your videos, and then you know create your form. The wizard does it pretty intuitively. Uh, but that would be how you would create for uh, any business. General basic layout, um, if you can see like on my pages, video and then capture page information to the right. Okay. That's generally how I load it because um, then it's definitely better, you know, even if it goes to something like a, a mobile screen or something like that, it usually fits fine um, when they just turn their phone sideways or whatnot. It's usually easier to see everything on that than if they had to try and scroll. Sometimes the video covers up the whole page on their phone and they can't really scroll. They're just touching the video. 
Okay. So this, this usually helps out with the format and the and getting them uh getting them all set for as far as uh getting their information. But you always want to have some kind of video on your capture page to give them the information that they're looking for. Um, a lot of the old ways people have been doing capture pages is to have a capture page up and then give them access to the video. I like doing it the other way around because then people actually get some information about what you're doing and then they fill in the capture page and then you know they're actually interested rather than they just filled out your capture page to get to a video, watched a minute of the video and found out they didn't want anything to do with it. And right. then you're sitting there, you know, sending out emails to them, you know, trying to reach out to them with your autoresponder and you have a lead that you're following up with that was never truly interested in what you're looking at. They just did it to get to the next step and watch the video. Here you kind of eliminate that um, by, you know, having the video up front of what you're going to be talking about or what you're going to be doing. Uh, then once they fill out that information, they're obviously going to want more information or actually sign up. So you kind of skip that phase of, of needing to really follow up with them. They make their decision here or they'll contact you, you know, to get in touch with you to get a couple of questions answered or whatnot. But then um, that's the easy way of going about it. If you do use some of the, the first level pages, which you can edit these here, um, but you have to do a little bit differently. Like I use the splash 20 page because um, it's like the perfect setup, I believe. Uh, but you can use any of these particular pages. This one's pretty decent as well. Uh, but I would always use something that has video um, and then the capture page information. This one fits really well on a mobile screen because um, the video is stationary and it loads wide enough to where you can scroll with it. So I have that set on, a, on an actual um, for when I send out to mobiles. So it's always good to get a couple of different capture pages, even if they have the same information. So like this one in particular shows up pretty well on mobile and it gives them All right, good to have you back. So, did Thanks. you miss any of that that I was saying in there? No, I I, I, I left the one when you were talking about how the mobile the video screen for the capture page for the video for mobile phones. This screen right okay. here was the best screen for that. Yeah, this is the yeah. one that I use um, in particular uh, for mobile. It shows up pretty good as far as the on a mobile phone. Um, especially when they turn sideways because the video size is already set and it widens out the rest of the page for it. Um, so when you go to this particular one, um, it's definitely good to always have that back uh, that backup. You know, if they say they couldn't view it or whatnot. So you can see how the 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 page is widened and the video is kind of centered. 
so it allows right. them to scroll on the sides when they touch on a mobile phone. So it doesn't let the video cover up the entire screen because um, it has a background behind it. And then the links are easily touchable as well um, just below that because a lot of phones will have at least a zoom feature so they can zoom in if they need to make that bigger and be able to touch each one of the links. So it's always definitely good to have a backup, you know, just in case they say, oh, I'm on a cell phone or whatnot, or I couldn't view it. Because this, the new pages are supposed to shrink, you know, as far as getting everything set up on mobile. But sometimes some of the features don't shrink. Like, uh, like on my particular page, I have the menu options. And that particular menu, when it shrinks, it stacks on top of each other. I understand. So um, that is something that, you know, once that that starts, uh, you know, as far as this menu here, once it stacks on top of each other, it kind of pushes everything else down and kind of jumbles it all together. You can still watch the video and get to everything, but it's a little bit more harder to do um, on a mobile screen because this stretches so far and the screen ends up shorter. So this, how it's kind of stacked on top of each other here, fits better for mobile. Um, so you can definitely play around a couple of those different pages and view them you know, in different aspects. Um, I know with the drag and drop editor, you should be able to look at the page of how it would view um, in the preview based on you know what you're looking at, um, which I think it does still have the buttons here. They used to have it where you could press the buttons on a different view style to see how it would look. it any longer they might have they might be adjusting that feature um, but they used to have it so you, uh, up top you could change the the angle view of what it would look like whether it be mobile tablet or uh, you know PC or whatnot right um, but then that's the main thing that you'll end up setting up is just getting those pages set up once you figure out a design that you like you can always use the design that we already have set up um, so if you come into any one of these, what you can do, um, since you have the pro membership, you can click on one of the, the pages when you go to edit, if you like that style, and literally make a duplicate page. So when you duplicate okay. that page, that's how I made all of these. Like I literally only made one page and then duplicate it and then just changed out, you know, the information. So then once you duplicate it, you come and change the title, you click on it, change the video. And then, you know, I change this for to, so, you know, fill out the form and be directed to the weight loss company, um, you know, and then you obviously change your, your redirect on where that's going. Right. Um, but, but other than that, you can literally only have to really put the page together once. So there was a couple of different edits that I did on that particular page um, to widen out the video because the video used to be a bit smaller. It actually ended like right here. So I widened that out a little bit more. So it was closer to leave less space in between the capture form and the video and make the video a little bit bigger. Um, but, so, you know, once that was updated, then I just, you know, kept duplicating the page. I didn't actually have to create each one of those pages all over again. I found the, you know, the template that I like and then I just kept using and then just filling in whatever information that I needed. So I could do the same with so, each one of my um, opportunities. I can make correct. one page yeah. and then just duplicate that one page for each opportunity. Correct. Yeah. And then that gives you that gives you your business the same look. So you know, no matter what they're going for, you get the same kind of customer experience because they're gonna, you know, each one of the product lines that they end up clicking on 
they're still going to get the same style of information. You know, so if they, they get, will get used to your style and how you're presenting and how you do things. So once they see the same style with every single thing that you do, you know, that's where it comes down to, you know, really duplication there because you have everything set up the same exact way. You just interchanged like those variables in an autoresponder. All you really do here is come and adjust the variables and bam, you've got, you know, new pages all set up. Okay, can you tell me, show me where, when I change, I'll say I want to put a new, a new uh, video in. Where would I put the new video for uh, my capture page? Which, okay. well, I, so I did for it. And, I did it and it turned out. It didn't, it didn't pop up. I don't know what I did wrong. Okay. So what you'll do, so example, we'll start with self-service just for an example. So what you'll do is um, this will be the title of the page. So you'll want to make sure that that's updated to reflect whatever it is that you're promoting. You'll click on the box, which is already preset and you'll click on insert video and you'll put in your YouTube link of whatever video that you want displayed. That oh, so maybe I put the, what, did I put the wrong link? Do we have two different type of links to put in there? Um, did I put the, should I put the embedded link or my link? You can use either one. Um, I use the embedded on this one because I changed the video size. But you can use either one. Um, if you go with the current proportions, which you can change that on here as well, on um, the dimensions of it. But right. if you're just editing one of the pages that I've already set up for you or duplicate that page, this right. will already be set for you. So you'll only have to change the video link. Now you can pull up whatever video you want. Okay. So just for example. That's what I did wrong. Yeah. So you just come in here, you can grab whatever video that you want to put up. Like so for example, I'll go to these here. And if I wanted this video, I'd copy the email, I'd copy the YouTube link, just paste it in there, and boom, I'd have that video. Okay. And then right. you save the changes, obviously save the changes there, and then that will update the video. You got to make sure that you hit save at the bottom. Okay. And then, you know, make sure that your link's in there. If your link's in there, you're good, um, you know, as far as the redirect. But this is pretty much the same same as that first page. Okay, I see what I did wrong. And then that will allow you to update any of, any of those other pages. And that's pages that you already have complete, uh, uh, yeah. have done, and I'm just duplicating it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, that makes it that much easier for you. So, I mean, if you if you like that style, you can always pick a different style. Um, you can always you know experiment and pick some of the other styles that are there, or go into the drag and drop and create your own style. But that's the basic setup for it. Insert your video, and then you know make sure that your capture page is labeled, you know, with the proper opportunity since we have multiples. Now, usually with the opportunities like I have here, I change the name to a generic one like weight loss, self service, you know, something that doesn't say the actual company name, because then you can always just swap out the video if you decide to, you know, promote something else or right. something else comes along or, you know, whatever happens to happen. Um, you then don't have to go and change that entire capture page. You just have to, you know, go switch out the video. Okay. I got one more question, please. Uh, uh, on Saturday, when you was on our webinar, you were talking about sec secrets, you know, the, the company. Um, yes. Now, okay, I'm with, uh, you know, Janessa. Janessa Skincare, all that too. But I'm, I want to be like an Amazon, okay? I want to be able to promote, if, if I do doing skincare, I want to promote all different types of skincare. Why am I here? People telling me this. I've been told, well, you can't just from you can just promote one company in that in that type of industry. If I want to be like an Amazon, should not be able. I'm not. I'm not recruiting. Should I be able to sell any type of, you know, skincare that I would like if I want to be like an Amazon? 
or you can, is that an issue? There, there are some restrictions based on um, some of the companies. Secret is one of them that is very restrictive. They okay. do not like cross marketing. Okay. Um, so as far as swapping, like moving down lines, if it's just a customer base, you'll probably be fine with it, which is why I have it set up the way I have, but I also don't have any competing product lines. So it's not like, um, you know, have one skin, one team selling multiple skincare product lines. That's kind of what Secret doesn't like. And as far as co cross promoting distributors in Secret for other, um, uh, other opportunities. So if okay. you're taking it from a customer standpoint, it should be fine. You'll have to let them know and explain to them that you're doing it that way as a customer standpoint only. Distributors pick, you know, whatever company they want to be a part of, but they might see that as kind of a conflict of interest. Now, the problem that it would run into on a personal level, depending on, um, you know, if you were to present, then you would have to have, you know, two basic two different areas for skincare and you kind of separate your customer base because they would see that as, you know, they're going to see it as one product line, but you'd actually have two separate product lines when you have secret and Janess. Um, Cause then it, it comes down to, you know, if a customer asks, well, what do you have for skincare now? Which one do you promote first? You know, are you going to say, Oh, I have this instantly ageless or I'm going to have, you know, this, this uh, secret skincare mask, you know, so it's like, then you could run the risk of, you know, battling yourself as far as your own competition in telling the, with how you approach the customer on which product to present first. So, I mean, you, you'll definitely come across the experience on, on which will be better to lead off with as it grows and as you, you know, test market a couple of things, but that's the, the personal thing that you run into because the customer is not going to know the difference, but it's going right. to come down to, okay, do I do this first or do I do that first? And that's something that um, it's just going to be kind of experience. You're just going to have to kind of trial and error that because there isn't, there isn't a, a, a strict formula for that. I mean, because every customer's different. Every person's got a little bit different agenda. Every person has, you know, a little bit different in interest. So there okay. isn't really going to be a set way to do it. Um, but as you, you know, test it on a couple of different people, you can then see, you know, which approach works better or which approach you're having more success with. I understand. But yeah, you can do it. You just have to be very careful in doing it. Okay. And it, it usually, usually you won't see any kind of, any kind of, uh, I would say backlash really from the companies because they don't keep that tight of a watchful eye out for stuff like that. It's only once you get higher in the ranks and larger teams and stuff of that nature and you start going to like their recognition meetings and you start getting into more of the inner workings of the company, that's when it can become more of a problem of being in other companies. But if you're just doing it on a customer standpoint and just doing a customer base, you'll be fine and you'll earn off of the retail of it and, and be able to earn great amounts of money with it just being on the customer side. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Because you can load thousands of customers and still be under the radar as far as under a watchful eye to where they're actually looking at something like that. Okay. So, why? Okay, I like guess. Why can I just sell it? Right. And they'll, I let them choose what they want. I, I won't give them a, you know, if they say I have skincare, I said, well, I have skincare here. I have skincare here. I said, you know, it's your choice of what you need. So mm -hmm. if they if they choose, they like what they choose, then that's where they go. I don't. I, what if I don't coerce them in choosing? Is that still an issue? Because like I said, beauty is where I started. That's where I started with beauty. Okay. Yes. Other things came along the way, and I told everybody, well, 
I might as well have a store, you know, have a like a beauty supply, have a little bit of everything, which now I, mm. this is what I offer, okay? But I'm getting to the problem where, I don't know if people are getting confused. You don't see me recruiting much for opportunities. I recruit for the, you know, the savings or I recruit other benefits of the product itself. You don't see me say just join a business just to make more money. I, I try not to do that because I know I am selling some products that are the same. Yeah. But I'm have I'm coming into a problem where I want to add something, add another product line that I think would be more cost efficient for my customers. I have high end customers and I have customers that are like on a budget. So while I was looking looking in secret, you know. A lot of my customers if they don't afford that, then what they what Jeanette's Jeanette is kinda of expensive to some people. Retail. So they can't afford it. They want to, but they can't afford it. So I I was trying you know, in the stores, you know, they have their either high quality food, then you have your generic. So exactly. all those secrets yeah. all those secrets not generic, it's still it's not expensive as um as Jeanette. So I, I, I want to know what's, when I knew it was a forty nine ninety five. I said, well, that's nothing to get in it. I said, well, will it be a problem if I get in it? So I don't know. I, before I went and, you know, said I wanted to do it, I want to hear what would be the issue of me doing it if I'm not selling it. I'm not recruiting people to a team. I, if you want to yeah. get recruited because of you like the product, that's fine, but my goal is to sell the product to people for the benefit, not for recruiting as uh, a business. So exactly, uh, yeah, and that's the, that's the same focus that we have here with the MSI concept. It's like you you use these products anyways. Now you can you can make money if you want to, but you know you're going to use the products right. anyways. Just get high quality products. So that's what we're offering here is high quality products. That people are going to buy anyways so that's right. the whole basis of it um so yeah definitely you can get involved with it you'll be fine at sticking to that mindset of it as that you're there to acquire new customers which is what we do in the msi concept so you'll be fine there the only thing we'll have to figure out a good game plan of how you're going to run both of them together to allow them to have a proper choice because then otherwise you're probably going to have to do a custom video to show both of them. That's what I was, I, I already thought about that. That's what I, I thought about doing videos showing both what, what both products do. And so yeah, and that's I, more I would, than likely what you're going to have to do. And I would say, you know, this is, if you can afford this, it's fine. If you can afford this, this is where you need to go. But this is what they do. This is what both of these products do. So I was thinking about that myself, but like I said, it's something I really want to get involved with. But I was getting so much um, when I spoke to one person about it, another internet um, marketer, and uh, she told me that I should just promote. Somehow they'll get confused, and I shouldn't do that. She just yeah, you, that. you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about confusion on a customer standpoint. They're going based on the product that they're looking for and the price of it. So it doesn't matter where it comes from, which company it's with. They're not going to care about the name of it, you know, until they actually start using it. Then they'll recognize the name of it because they don't they've never heard of these companies before. They don't know Jeunesse. They don't know Secret. They don't know exactly. what it is, but they know what a, a moisturizing face cream is. You know, so they know, you know, they, they, they know what, you know, a, a eye serum is. So they know what the products are. They don't know necessarily the company of it. So it doesn't matter where it comes from. They're looking at what it is and what's the price on a customer standpoint. So the customer themselves are not going to get confused. The only thing that's what I was saying that it puts it on you on a personal level of directing them to which product line. So, because at the end of that video, and you have them on one of your capture pages, it's going to have to redirect them somewhere. Now, you could just take them to a generic thank you page, which might be the best, and then, you know, follow up with them and see which product they like best, and have an instant email go out to them, say, hey, 
you know, I know you just entered your information on my skincare line. Which product did you like best? Um, so that way you can, you know, I know best how to follow up or whatnot. Um, then you could do that and kind of filter it, sort it that way, because then you would have to sort after the fact. But you would at least have that joint video that says, hey, I have these products. They're this price range. I have these products. They're this price range. You know, fill out your information below let, fill, and let me know, you know, which product line you would like. Do you think that's something I could do? You think I'm biting off more than I can chew? Not necessarily because you already have that type of customer base. When you introduce these new products, it's only going to offer something new. And this also allows you to go back to every customer you've ever sold and say, hey, I now have these products as well. So it could be an instant flash in the pan of new of your old customers repurchasing for you because okay. you're introducing a new product line to them and say, hey, I know you guys have bought this before, you know, taking that Amazon approach, say, hey, based on your you, you ordering this before, you might also like these new products that I have. Check this out. And you could get a flash of sales right then and there. Okay, that's what I'm ready. Right. Okay. So I've been thinking about this for days, and like, I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to present it to you because when I come to you, I want to at least know what I'm talking about. So it took me a little time to, you know, go through it. But today, it finally, it, it was time to introduce it to you to see. It's, so, it's something I want to do. Do you think I could do it without being yeah, confused? Yeah, I, I definitely believe that you can. Um, there's, there's not really any confusion when it comes to a customer standpoint. That's how it's, okay. that's how we can easily promote everything in the MSI concept. Right. We don't use the similar product lines just for the personal standpoint. Now I don't have to sort through, okay, do you want this product line or that product line when they're the same, they're in the same niche. So that's the only reason why I don't do it personally, but that, that fits in for exactly what you are doing. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Thank you. I mean, that was real. That was one really reason besides I was in. I wanted this little session tonight because I want to be able to start putting it out there on my LSN, and I didn't know how to use the tools to put it out there. So gotcha. I needed to know how to use the tools, see was it okay for me to do it, then to see how and how to use the tools so I can begin to put it out there to people. So. Um, yeah, definitely. And no, yeah, no worries at all. You can always. Uh, ask me any questions at all, especially when you're thinking of something like that type of decision. Um, you know, it's definitely, definitely the way to, to go um, as far as getting everything set up. So, you know, definitely, definitely uh, get that all together. Um, you know, and I can, I can give you the link to get connected with Secret. Um, yes. And, and that will be, uh, uh, let me get this here. Great. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, you can definitely do it that way. Um, I don't see, I don't see anything being a problem, you know, as far as what you have set up and what you're doing, um, because, you know, that will actually with your customer base more than likely generate you, you know, an instant, uh, instant sales because people have already bought in products from you before. Good. So okay. Just say, Oh, you know, now when you come in and introduce this new product line so what i would do to set that up is i would i would get um i would create the new video then i would say uh you know you have the two new pro the new product line and then you know definitely cover uh Jeunesse. um you know even if you already have a Jeunesse video you could probably just then do a secret video and kind of mash those two together but you'll want to make sure that it's no more than 10 to 15 minutes a 15 minutes at the max. Okay. Um, you know, just to give them the quick over insight. You can do a longer video after that if you wanted to. Um, right. Just on the initial insight, you want to keep it, you know, under 15 minutes. And then uh, what I would do is once you have that video set up, since you won't know exactly where to direct them based on the video alone, and you can only have one direct, um, 
when you come in and edit your skincare video um, here, I will yeah. probably redirect them to like your Facebook page. Um, and then, you know, just have something at the end of the video stating, you know, once you fill out the information, you'll be directed to my Facebook page so you can send me a direct message and let me know which product you like best. Oh, that's perfect. So I would have them go directly to contacting you and letting you know that, plus sending out that instant email, um, which uh, with the autoresponder, you'll want to set up a specific group for that and just label it, you know, you can label it skincare or whatnot. Um, and then you'll have that direct group have an instant email that says the same thing. Hey, I know you checked out the video. Please contact me via Facebook or my phone number or email, you know, however you want to be contacted on that and let me know which products you like, which product line you like best and, you know, or which product you are interested in. So, you know, I can get that order placed for you or whatnot, however you want to kind of work that to find right. out if they want a Jeunesse or secret. So you, I would send that email, then I would send them another email um, within three days. So you can either go two or three days, um, you know, and this you'll have to kind of, kind of keep an eye on. Um, so what you should have is a second, two second groups um, that, that you can sort them through. So once you have your groups, I would add in a group for Jeunesse and a group for um, Secret. Secret. Yeah. And then that way, so like I have this group called Customers. So I send out the MSI Concept emails, and if they happen to just want to be a customer, then I can come in here to the leads, and I can transfer them to the customer group. Like this particular lady, where is she at? I know she's in here. It's Laura. So she wasn't interested in the business side of it. I can come in here and transfer her over to the customer group. So I just come in. It's like she's already in it now, so it's not going to show up in the list. But I can send her over to, you know, a different group. And so you would have that in the list because she's already in customers. It won't show. So let me do this for just a better example. So here's your name, for example. Go to transfer. And you can just, bam, put them in the customers. But you'll have two other groups that will be Jeunesse and one will be Secret. And then you can just select. Um, so you'll have to have to uh, manually go in and change those. But I would, do, I would do an instant email to have them contact you. Three days later, I would send them another, either two or three days later. Um, you can choose and you can test out both to see which you get a better response from. But either two or three days later, I would send them another email on that same autoresponder campaign. Right. If they haven't gotten in touch with you, say, hey, I haven't heard from you. I'm not sure which product line you like best or if you needed more information or if you have any questions, please get in contact with me, reach out to me, and then provide you know, your contact method. I would give them a couple of different methods. Usually phone and Facebook is one of the two most common. Um, right. but you, they can always reply to that email that you send out as well. Um, so you can always write that in there as well. You know, feel free to reply to this email and let me know or contact me on Facebook or give me a call. So I would have that either two or three days later. Then I would send another email a week after that. So technically it would be the 10th day. And then okay. for the 10th day, it would be, you know, hey, I'm just following up. I know you checked out my video. I wanted to see if there was any questions I could answer for you, you know, to, you know, help you out with any of your skincare needs. And then, you know, definitely have them, you know, with your contact info again. Now with Secret, are you allowed to, am I allowed to put that on any other website that I have? I have like a, my um, own, you know, my Shopify site. Can I put it on my eBay mm -hmm. site? Am I allowed to put that? those products on there as well, or they're not allowed to be put on there. I know Jeunesse, I know, do that. Yeah, I know Secret does not like it, but I have seen Secret products end up on eBay. Um, since it can be sold retail, like you basically can buy it and sell it for any price that you really want. Right. Um, you should be able to. I would say the only thing that would be difficult with it is Secret has a lot of products. I think they have like 53 different products. Oh, so fine. it would be difficult to yeah to move them all over, and they give you the website that has them all anyways. 
and they're, they've been adding some new products. So, I mean, if you're going to put them on your store in particular, I would find out a couple that sell hot or if you wanted to discount a, a specific one. So, like, say the retail price is $50, you know, and you want to sell it, you know, at 40 for, you know, a specific customer base or whatnot, then I would do something like that and add it to your store. Okay, I got you. I think I yeah, you. or if you're going to do like a, a free shipping offer or whatnot, I would okay. do it through your store that way. I understand. And then you. you can then you can go into the secret back office and order it at the agent price and have it sent directly to the customer. Yes, I was going to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I would I would do it that way if you're because if, if you're just gonna market at retail, there's not really a point to put it in your take the time to build it all in your store when you already have the secret website. Gotcha, smart. You gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. And all right. Then, that's uh, you'll have the link there in your um, Facebook. Okay. Good. I I will do that as soon as I get off off here. Um, that's my mind. That's where I'm going. I want to have um. I want to be the next Amazon, um, and I want my, you know, LSN to help me get there. You know, my, my mother, MS, my, MS Mind, what you gave me the idea was knowing about MS I Mind, you know, MSI Concept, about, you know, different streams of income. Now, a lot of my streams of income are products that you have in a store, and mm -hmm. that's what I want as my own store. I started with beauty, health, and wellness, and I'm adding different things. I'm adding different things. So um, that's my goal. But um, Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, so it's like I've done the same kind of thing, too. So with my uh, Shopify store, um, not only do I have the cell phones, I also have watches on there as well because I have a watch. I saw the watches. Uh, yeah, I did. So I have that on as well, and I'm actually looking at, um, trying to get those little scooters. So if I can lock in a good wholesale deal for those scooters, I'll be adding those too. So yeah, yeah there's definitely. I try to look at those. Like, I couldn't find them. I couldn't find a good wholesale special for those scooters. Yeah. They are very, so I, very pricey. I've been looking for. I want to yeah. sell them this year. I really did want to sell them for my um on my um, at my store, but I couldn't find a good price for them. It was hard. Yeah, I, I haven't found anything good. I, I've I've reached out to a couple of vendors on it, but I haven't got anything that's on like a wholesale drop ship level. Um, you know, there's ones that you can get that are around the same average price. Like they can range anywhere from two to five hundred. Right. Um, you know, but still, even with that, it's like I want to get it to like a one fifty price range. Right. So exactly. I, know I know they can't be that expensive to make, really. I thought so, too, but I, I've been getting the, the, the lowest what I did yet, I got a 350 a 350 And he turned out was, you know, as low as you could go. So I stopped looking for these about a week, two weeks ago. Because uh, it, it's hot out, everybody wants it, but it, they're expensive. They're very, they're very, I can't find a good price for them anywhere. And I looked I have I'm on this wholesale website where you know they drop ship and do I, I, I'm in contact with a whole lot of wholesale um mm -hmm. bank dealers and they was it was so expensive I couldn't I couldn't believe the price so uh, this yeah, year I was not it. one source I want to say it was two ninety five but in order for you to get that price I think you had to order fifty. So it was like you had to already like it was a it was you had to actually purchase them wholesale yeah. rather than drop ship them. Drop ship. And yeah. I don't want to hold I don't want to hold inventory. I don't either. I uh, yeah. I used I used to hold inventory at first. I stopped last year and it was it was a lot. It was expensive yeah. and it was a lot. So I do it the easy way now. <laughs> but still now, since I used to you know hold you know has so much material, they still try to get me to do that. So now gotcha. they won't sell they won't sell me at they don't do a drop ship rate with me. Because they know I used to, you know, buy the material, stock it, you know. So it's kinda hard for me to drop um, you know, good drop shippers. Um I found one mm -hmm. that I'm working with now. And they've done a few little things for me, drop ship and it worked out well. So 
it was only small items. It wasn't anything big to talk about. Gotcha. So, uh, but that's my idea. I I, I want to store, and I hope I, I hope with NFI, you know, concept that it get me to the where I want to be. You know, to add more items, items, more product lines for the product. You know, I want to add about three or four by you know in the middle of next year. So that, that's what I'm looking towards. That's my goal. Nice. Yeah, I, I definitely see um, you having no problems doing it. Um, you know, I can definitely see that happening. You know, definitely with all the different product lines. Um, you might even, no, that wouldn't work well. I'm going to say you might even be able to use the the uh, LSN system side, the entrepreneur system as the customer base, but that wouldn't work. That wouldn't really be necessary to use that for that. Um, you can just use the regular marketing tools. Yeah, I definitely know I need the marketing tool. I definitely know I need that to help me with the business. And um, that's why I was asking you to help me understand them. So I know how to use them. Yeah, definitely. Were there any other tools that you needed? I'm actually going to be doing a video on the form creator uh, a little bit later today. Yeah. I need a, I need to know how to do that to put that on my blog because I try to put it on okay. my blog and I don't know like I don't know about putting um, HTML codes in me and putting them up it, it don't work you know it don't I don't I do it wrong gotcha so yeah I'm gonna go through that then really quick um, I'm gonna stop this recording and then I'm gonna start a new one and I'm gonna use it as the video so you're going to get the live look in of the actual video. Okay. I'm going to knock out two birds with one stone. I'm going to show you, but I'm going to actually record it um, for LSN at the same time. I understand. Okay. So let me, uh... let me get this set up. All right, I'm going to move out your line, and then you'll okay. be able to press star six um, once the recording is over to come back in. Um, okay. So just stay muted till I get fully done, and then you'll hear that the recording has stopped, um, and then I can I'll, – I'll just unmute you after that. Uh, okay. So Thank gonna, you. I'm going to set this up. All right. No problem. All right, let me get this here.